what is going on greetings of peace so i'm just gonna do a rebuttal video uh to this guy who's a liar he lies about islam but again we see he doesn't even understand his own religion and i've done videos in the past about this guy's name's david wood and now uh since it's one of their pagan traditions is coming up on december 25th even though it doesn't mention it in their book that's been corrupted uh they're gonna celebrate this holiday known as christmas but anyway I'm going to rebuttal to David Wood's uh, video, but it's not him. It's actually his wife in this video. It's called, Is Christmas Pagan? Mary Wood, first of all, just look at the question. Is Christmas Pagan? First of all, Christianity is Pagan. What is Pagan? Pagan is someone who worships the creation and not the creator. I repeat, someone who worships the creation and not the creator. That's what Paganism is. Uh, but anyway, I'll quickly prove that. God is all-knowing. He knows the hour. If you go to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verse 32, it says, Of that day or hour no one knows, not the Son nor the angels, but only the Father. So only the Father knows, the Holy Spirit. The Son doesn't know. That's why Jesus said, My Father is greater than I. My Father is greater than all. So that means He's greater than the Son and the Holy Spirit. And one knows the hour and the other two don't, according to Mark 13, 32. Trinity is debunked. This is proof it's polytheism, it's paganism. But back to the video, his wife, first of all, um, real quick, because they like to criticize Muslims. Uh, let me just go off the King James Bible, what it says. Uh, why is she not wearing a head covering? If you go to their churches and stuff, they have alleged paintings of Mary and she's always covered. But uh, why is David Wood's wife not covered? Let's see. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6, it says... For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. So they have to cover their hair. They have to wear a hijab, but they don't. They always attack it. And secondly, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. Again, this is how some Christians interpret it. It says, um, But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. So, shh. But anyway, oh, this is according to her book, but I'm going to do a rebuttal video to it. Um, she's claiming, uh, she's trying to make uh, a case that Christmas is not paganism. It is. Um, number one, where in their Bible does it say uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, was born December 25th? Also think about that. They think God has a birthday. <laughs> but anyway, Jesus isn't God though. But anyway. Where does it say in the Bible his birthday was December 25th? Uh, where does it say to go get trees and uh, decorate it? And it also says don't have graven images. So they have like uh, scenes and stuff where they have uh, statues and stuff and graven images. But anyway, let me just read you a passage in Jeremiah chapter 10. And again, in this video, everything I'm quoting, I'm just using the King James Version. But anyway, uh, if you go to Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 to 5, just listen to the irony of this. Hear ye the word which the Lord spoke unto you, Hoasa Israel. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are in vain. Look, for the customs of the people are in vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of your works, man, with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. That sounds like a Christmas tree. But anyway, they are upright as the palm tree, but speak not. They must needs be born because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. Neither also is it in them to do good. So again, um... We see nowhere is it there in their scripture. And first of all, ever, evergreen trees aren't even uh, found in Israel. And um, anyway, back back to the topic at hand. And real quick, let me address something because um, we see here Christians in the United States. First of all, their religion is paganism. Then they mix in uh, more paganism into it. Uh, so it's uh, double paganism. We'll call it double paganism. Uh but anyway, um, you see them, they defend uh, Halloween and Christmas and stuff, even though they can't even find it in their scriptures, which has been corrupted. But anyway, uh, they're going to be people uh, 
some there's a hateful group of uh christians right now evangelicals and other sects and groups that are in the right wing and all they do is attack uh islam and they're obsessed with it and they lie about islam and stuff but anyway real quick uh they're gonna write in the comment sections there's a war on christmas and stuff even though 72 percent of the united states professes or claims to be christian while 92 or 93 percent of the united states celebrates it so there you go uh that war on christmas narrative debunked but anyway um why are they defending a pagan tradition i leave you at that now i'm gonna play you uh david wood's uh video of titled is christmas pagan and look at the ridiculous questions uh his wife mary would ask christmas is that magical time of year real quick it hasn't even been 10 seconds into her, uh her, her video and i had to pause it and just put in this uh interruption she calls it a magical time of the year first of all do you know what the punishment is for magic in the bible how that's something prohibited magic is something evil she claimed it's a magical time of the year so it's a evil time of the year <laughs> anyway let's resume her video according to her logic not only carolers but also our candid friends come a calling and by candid friends i mean of course those people brimming with the jolly holiday spirit of telling us how wrong we are about everything and how many of our cherished christmas traditions are pagan and evil and these candid friends are solely motivated by their passionate commitment to honesty and truth um yeah you are wrong and people have been telling you about it and it's not even there in your own bible so again you're deaf dumb and blind I mean, what what more do you want people to say? People are telling you 2 plus 2 equals 4, while you keep claiming figuratively that it's 5. Let's return the gift of canonness with a little bit of good old-fashioned common sense and a dash of history. Look, just because the pagans associated something with the worship of false gods doesn't mean that the thing in itself is evil or brings honor to false gods. Think about the implications for a second. Is December pagan? Are trees pagan? Oh, look at that Christmas tree with the baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph and the manger, just like in the Bible. So she asks, are trees pagan? Trees are trees. The act of worshiping a tree, that's a sin, that's evil, and that's worshiping the creation and not the creator. Again, we see her in sincerity. Uh, she's not making any points, and then she talks, and then she has an image of a uh, of a scene or something uh, that's supposed to be a scene from the Bible or something. Again, it says in your book, no graven images. So why is there a bunch of graven images? But anyway, let's keep looking at her video and keep rebuttaling it. So, pagan. Are decorations pagan? Is singing pagan? Is burning a log pagan? Is eating food with your family pagan? Is giving presents pagan? Is having fun and wishing others joy pagan? Of course, fun and joy are pagan. That's why so many charming people are trying to ruin Christmas. Okay, she's gonna ask a bunch of questions and I'm gonna play the video and listen to her at the same time and then just answer it. She says decorations, pagan, um, decorations are decorations, but if you have decorations that has graven images or um, that says nasty stuff or falsehood and lies, uh, or there's sinful decorations, then yes, that that's bad to do. Then our next question is, oh wait, let me rewind it real quick. Play it real quick. The decoration. She says a singing pagan, singing is singing, but again, if you sing blasphemous song, would that be pagan? Yes, it would. Or would that be sinful? Yes, it would. So, uh, her questions don't prove her point. She's gonna ask a bunch of questions like this and literally I can keep giving the same rebuttal. Then she says it's burning a log, pagan. Burning a log is burning a log. If you're using it for food or a fireplace, no. But if you're using it for paganistic rituals and that's your intention, then yes. Um, she's eating food with your family, pagan. Well, uh, depends on what you eat. If you're eating uh, food that's not halal or kosher or... Uh, food that that you're not allowed to eat that's pagan but again she's asking all these rhetorical questions no giving presents is not pagan but if you're doing it uh for a paganistic tradition or something then yes or if it's a 
present that's something sinful to give, then yes, it's something evil to do. Uh, she says it's having fun and having joy is something pagan to do. If you're doing it in the, uh, if you're doing it the righteous way, no. But if you're doing it in an evil and sinful way, and you find joy in doing evil, like drinking alcohol and stuff, then yes. Uh, but again, what does this prove about Christmas being pagan or not? She's not defending our holiday at all. I already proved it's paganism, but let's take a look at her next clips. Plenty of good folks out there have addressed the historical roots of many Christmas traditions, some of which do have elements that were once associated with pagan celebrations. Festivals in late December were connected to the winter solstice. But the winter solstice is part of the natural cycle of seasons. It existed before any pagan festivals. God created the winter solstice. So the winter solstice isn't pagan. The pagan simply recognized a feature of God's creation and built festivals around it. Does that make it off limits to Christians? Now she's asking if the winter solstice is pagan. For the sake of argument, let's just say it's on December 25th. December 25th is just December 25th. Um, it's just a day now. If you do uh, pagan acts, evil acts, sinful acts, then you're doing bad stuff on that day. If you do good stuff on that day, then you're just doing good deeds. But anyway, um, her question is dumb because uh, if you do pagan traditions and stuff on that day, then uh, you're doing pagan traditions. That's like asking is... Uh, is uh, mouthwash. Is mouthwash pagan? Mouthwash is mouthwash. Now you can use it to do good or to do bad. What I mean by good is uh, to brush your teeth or give it out to homeless people. And what I mean by bad is maybe you pour it in uh, someone's drink and you're playing a prank on them and you want them to drink it so they can get sick. So again, uh, you can use something for good or bad. December 25th has been tied to Saturnalia, a winter solstice festival celebrating the Roman deity Saturn. Did you know Saturday is named after Saturn? I guess Christians should ban Saturdays too. Look, originally the word pagan simply referred to people who lived in rural areas. Since Christianity began spreading initially in the cities, the term pagan became associated with peoples who were unreached by the gospel. So one of the big problems with the attitude of our candid Christmas critics is assuming that anything pagans did is anti-Christian. But seriously guys, I'm pretty sure pagan sneezed. So every time I sneeze, is it pagan? Only if I say God bless you. Right, person who told me it's pagan to say God bless you when someone sneezes? Again, we see her flaw in logic. So if person A, B, C, D says 2 plus 2 equals 4, then on that topic or that statement, they are correct. But if A, B, C, and D says 3 plus 3, uh, one group says 3 plus 3 equals 6, and the other says it's uh, 9, 12, and 15, then three of the groups are wrong. Or if one group says... 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 1, they are wrong. And if another group says 0 plus 0 plus 0 equals 1, they are wrong. 1 plus 1 just equals 2. That's it. Christianity's conquest of cultures wasn't about eradication. It was about redemption. It wasn't a systematic annihilation, but a sanctified integration. Remember how the Apostle Paul, who's speaking to the pagans of the day, declared before the Areopagus, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious, for as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world, and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are indeed his offspring. And now she quotes Paul again. Um, Jesus is one thing, Paul says another. Jesus is my father's greater than I, my father's greater than all. He doesn't preach any of this Trinity stuff or anything. Um, and then you see Paul coming and claiming divinity. And worshiping the creation so why she's quoting paul 
Anyway, uh, let's keep watching the rest of her video. Notice that Paul uses one of the pagan altars to begin his gospel presentation and then quotes two of their pagan poets to show them that they had something right. Although the pagans of old were misguided, they rightly sensed the one in whom we live and move and have our being, and their reverence was a good thing, which Christianity reclaimed by redirecting it from lifeless idols to the living God. The connections... So she says it reclaimed something from lifeless idols to the living God. And um, that's funny because uh, she worships the create she worships the creation and not the creator. And on top of that, they have graven images and idols of that creation. So uh, how ironic! Between Christmas traditions and pagan festivals, are actually signs of victory, because they remind us that the light which came into the world outshone all mythologies. She claimed to outshone the myths or something. Again, these are the people who preach a myth of Santa Claus. And he knows whether you're good or bad, you're awake or asleep. Does Santa also know the hour too? Because we know Jesus and the Holy Spirit don't know. Only the Father according to their book. So their trinity is false. Oh, if only the Father knows it, then that means Santa Claus, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus don't know it. And again, uh, Santa's a myth anyway. But uh, let's play the rest of her video. That a little over 2,000 years ago, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and that the world was never the same. That, my friends, is something to celebrate. Merry Christmas to you all. The Lord is come. Real quick, just reflect upon what I've said and also reflect upon this. Um, she never quotes uh, for, from her scripture to back up her point. She only gives one quote about Paul, which doesn't even back up her point at all. And... Um, on top of that, the same way how Jesus never said in their own scripture, I am God, and he also never said worship me. He never said these two statements. You'll also find him uh, when it comes to the topic of Christmas. He never celebrated it. You you go reread your scriptures, those of you people who call yourselves Christians, and just reflect upon this. Christmas is something that is pagan. And uh, it's not even found in your scripture. And... Uh, you're going to you're going to defend something that you have no proof for um and if it's something that's so important or something like that why is it not there in your scripture you literally celebrate a man-made holiday uh a pagan holiday i'm going to end the video right there but reflect upon this and again don't take my word for it i'm telling you go read your own scripture that's what i'm telling you to do uh, that's all I'm going to say because uh, she couldn't produce any verses. And again, now I challenge you to produce one verse. I'm going to end the video right there. Peace.